welcome to the show with me, Gillian Gartzel, The Glitter Show. With me today is Pete Hill, who is the co-founder and the VP of Corporate Development for Kudos. Pete, thank you so much for coming on our show. You're very welcome. It's, it's a pleasure to be here. Kudo, not kudos. I'm, I'm jumped ahead on that. So, um, but before we get into that, you were also working with fan engagement. And I see behind you, you've got a slide. Just tell me a bit about fan engagement and what you're doing and what it means. Um, yes, yeah, so, I mean, there's, like, there's plenty of interesting use cases that are kind of building within our ecosystem or on our ecosystem. We're using some part of our technology stack um, last year, this time last year, so early 2022. Uh, we got engaged, no pun intended, with this, you know, quite an interesting uh, concept for building uh, kind of metaverse experiences uh, in the form of kind of digital stadiums for clubs, you know, whether they're national clubs or, or domestic clubs um, and sporting clubs, by the way. So not necessarily football could be any type of sport. Um, and they've been, uh, you know, relentlessly building behind the scenes over the last year. Uh, and then in November, just in time for the World Cup, uh, they announced their partnership um, with uh, AFA, so the Argentinian Football uh, Association, um, and they 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 won the kind of exclusive digital rights um, for that. So that's a that's a project that you know I've been kind of uh, helping to advise on and uh, giving them some kind of technical steer and um, a few other pieces. But it's, a, it's 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 one that's very close to our hearts. And so that's attached to Kudo and Kudos. No, it's a, it's a completely separate company. So oh, okay. it's a company called Metalantis um, and yeah, completely separate team. So I've been providing some of the advisory. Um, the the actual technology will need to run on cloud computing as it scales. Um, yeah. you know, this is still kind of a fairly early stage at the moment. Um, so that's kind of where we will link up in that point and be able to provide them that kind of scalable computing power um, going forwards. That makes sense. Okay, so there, there is a connection. I was wondering where I came from, there is a connection, so it fits in. So with Kudo being the overall company and Kudos being the... Blockchain. Actually, tell me, define the two of them. Sure. So, so Kudo is the, is the name of the, 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 the parent company, um, oh. and then the subsidiary includes Kudos, which is the blockchain uh, company. And the okay. name of our token as well, but it's all set, it's all part of the same ecosystem, all part of the same tech. Um, so we have a, a kind of two layer uh, technology stack, if you like. So we have the blockchain itself, which is layer one, um, and then we have Kudo Compute, which is this scalable distributed cloud computing platform, uh, and they both communicate with each other. Well, that makes sense. Um, I was looking at the vision statement for Kudos Ventures, and it said software as a service, um, aiming for one billion, um, for a few good causes without eating up all the earth's resources like so be as a co-founder could you explain the thinking behind that yeah so i mean the idea behind um you know what we've been building anyway is to find a more sustainable way to provide cloud computing um there's multiple reports out there saying that we need a thousand times more compute efficiency by the uh, 2030 that's from intel uh 50 of the internet will be run on gpus that's from nvidia um and uh and you can kind of see it going that way with all the kind of developments in the metaverse and, and everything's becoming much more kind of graphical and interactive um and that's just one sector then you've got ai and then you've got you know so, so everything is growing exponentially when you when you're looking when you're talking about um you know the the requirement for cloud computing um so we wanted to make sure that we were using all of that kind of existing cloud computing resources already out there or computing resources already out there so Yes, that starts with uh, within the uh, the kind of denser environments, the kind of data center environments where there's that existing idle compute, but it will expand to you know, gaming towers, consoles, mobile phones in the future, kind of any connected device really. Um, and that has significant carbon uh, savings um, associated with it because around about, and this is a fact for the data centers outside, it might be slightly different, but around about 70% of the carbon footprint um, for a new server is not actually once it's been turned on. So this is, we're talking about over its life cycle, mm -hmm. it's before it's been turned on. So that's actually making the server itself, shipping the server, building the data center that's got to, uh, to kind of house that server. All of that is kind of carbon footprint. So if we can use what's already out there, it's already in place, it doesn't need to be shipped, then, you know, we've done something that's that's good and we've, you know, we've, uh, we've contributed, shall we say. And then uh, on top of that, um, because we've built this in a kind of distributed model, i.e. anyone is able to supply um, hardware into the network, um, we don't own that infrastructure ourselves, that's the way we scale it, a bit like an Airbnb business model. Um, um, because we've uh, done that, that means that uh, we have the ability to be able to choose um, facilities that are coming from green areas as well. Um, you know, they might be running in Iceland or Sweden, for example. Yeah, so, you know, 70% of 
the carbon footprint over of a server over its life cycle before it's even been turned on. So I mean, it's quite crazy, really. And if we can use what's existing out there, then then fantastic. But the other the other part that we really that's very close to our hearts is um, how we can use the platform for uh, kind of charitable mm-hmm. events as well. So if you're a cancer research or an AIDS research or maybe even a COVID twenty three research, because COVID nineteen seems to be you know kind of behind us now. Um, But, you know, one of these kind of big research institutes and you need access to lots of computing power, then being a distributed network, we can give people the opportunity to be able to donate that computing power as well. Um, So that's something that we're very keen to kind of build out and build features into the existing marketplace to allow people to be able to do that. Uh, And that means that these research institutes, you know, these non for profits would have access to uh, free computing power, which can be worth more than the donations sometimes. Um, in that sense so there's lots of stuff we can do with this but you know it all comes back to how can we be better for the environment how can we use our tech for good and how can we you know provide a platform where anyone is able to benefit whether you're a supplier whether you're a buyer on there and where are you on that in that roadmap where whereabouts are you yes yeah, so and nearly everything is released now um so the blockchain went live um back in june or july in 2022 mm-hmm. Um, and Kudo Compute, which is that scalable distributed layer, uh, went live in its first version back at the end of October 2022. So we're in January now, if anyone's listening, 23. Um, and uh, we are just about to launch the interface for uh, developers on the blockchain to be able to access Kudo Compute Direct from the smart contract, so from the blockchain itself. So they'll be able to connect their wallet, they'll be able to use their Kudos tokens, and they'll be able to... Um, you know, buy computing power from from that scalable layer. Um, and is, is your computer power cheaper than if they have to sit, do it themselves? Yeah. So, well, if if we were to con- kind of compare it, and this is this is always going to change, right? So, there's no such thing as an exact science to mm. this because there's different use cases, there's different types of hardware, there's different regions where people will need to to, to consume that compute depending on uh, what kind of computing job that they're pushing over the top of it. Um, but in the one comparison that we've done against, or, or should I say side by side to, to AWS, which was on a video rendering job, um, we came out around about 10 times less um, on, on cost with about a 30% performance upside to it as well. So that's great. So that's kind of proven the model and, and what we're trying to uh, achieve here. Um, but, you know, sometimes it might only be 50% less. Sometimes it might be more than that. It just really depends on where that is being consumed um, and what kind of supply that's going on to. Yeah. And so who are your customers at the moment? Do you have your, any real-time customers or are they coming on board? Or Yeah, absolutely. So we're, we're at that kind of early point now. So mm-hmm. where they're all starting to convert and, and come on. So, you know, from a, from a kind of blockchain side of things, you know, we've got a lot of traction with metaverses, as you can imagine, metaverses yeah. all looking three years ahead and saying we're going to need to scale a lot of computing power if we can do that directly from the blockchain then you know that saves us uh, time makes it more efficient we can use our tokens that kind of thing so so metaverses is a big area for us uh, and with that comes kind of blockchain games and um, other associated kind of use cases we've got um, you know, NFT rendering as well that's that will be a, a big thing for us because we've got the GPU power behind the scenes where people are able to kind of mint the NFTs on the chain but also render the artwork off chain um, and bring it all together um, and that's kind of from the web free space and there's DeFi and there's the other kind of usual use cases in there there's some really really cool ones that are kind of happening in kind of Africa that we're working on which kind of leads us more into the ESG that we're um, mm-hmm. um, say environmental social governance um, everything we're trying to do that's good with the tech um, and around, in and around that and that's kind of monitoring and DeFi and again a, a few of those coming together and then on the on the on the completely non-blockchain let's go back to kind of web 2 let's just talk about pure cloud computing space it's very much AI and video rendering that we're seeing the most traction from at the beginning okay going back to the tech you're built on Cosmos why and will you be agnostic blockchain agnostic <clears throat> Yeah, so so we so we uh, we spent a lot of months kind of uh, researching this and kind of going into the various different technologies that are out there at the time or blockchain uh, architectures are out there at the time, <clears throat> and this was um, you know kind of end of 2020 in the first three or four months of 2021 after we done our token launch um, that we were looking at this. Now uh, our objective is to be highly interoperable because you know we want to uh, we want to become that default computational layer for all blockchains so mm-hmm. we'll start off developers on our, our chain um, but you know we want to connect to as many chains as possible because it's a shortfall on all of those chains everyone's a layer one they haven't necessarily got this computational expansion 
uh, Filecoin have done that very well with storage, so we want to do it with compute, right? So um, what we what kind of drew us to um, Cosmos um, as the, the Cosmos SDK, uh, to be more precise, was that they have the Tendermint protocol, right? So you have all your, your governance um, already. Um, it's already been uh, pr beyond proof of concept. There are already lots of chains that were running uh, the kind of Tendermint protocol um, on there. Um, it has a decent transactions per second as well, you know, certainly faster than Ethereum uh, at the time. I know Ethereum's got sharding coming up, but that wasn't even on, you know, a paper at that point. Um, and that allows us to do kind of micro transactions where if you're considering what we're going to be doing with the kind of scalable compute, there's going to be constant micro transactions going across the network. So we need to be able to support that in a low cost way. Uh, and because it was proof of stake, it gave us the opportunity to, um, to, to, to produce a green blockchain as well. So, you know, we, we have a, we're very proud to say we've got hundred uh, percent carbon neutral blockchain because we will, uh, offset the small amount of electricity that it uses to run mm -hmm. a proof of stake network. But nonetheless, you know, that's our, that's our commitment. Um, and Cosmos has a, has a growing, uh, community. So going back to that kind of interoperability, being able to connect to as many chains as possible. Um, there was a key decider, which was called IBC, so the Inter-Blockchain Communication Protocol from the Interchain Foundation, and that was exclusive to Cosmos um, at the beginning. It's actually starting to break out and go to other chains as well now, which is fantastic because it means it's kind of almost becoming that standard. Um, but IBC means that any, any chain that is IBC integrated can, can communicate with each other uh, effectively. Um, so that was a real key part for us because it meant that, you know, once we have Compute Live, which we, we push live now, then we can connect all those other chains fairly simplistically. And it means that we then have a good set of other developers on other chains that will be able to benefit from um, our computing layer as well. You mentioned earlier that you launched your token mid last year. Uh, did you raise how much did you raise and on top of what or was it a raise or was it a utility to explain yeah so, so we so we we actually did the token launch in january 2021 so it's oh, two wow, years okay. ago now believe it or not <laughs> um so it's crazy where time goes isn't it um but yeah we, we launched the token in 2021 uh originally that was on ethereum so it was an erc20 token um but mid last year we we migrated and we okay. migrated that across so it's uh to a native kudos token um, but we do have both versions, so people are still able to use the ERC20 and, and our native token. Uh, and it's utility. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. so its main purpose is really for, for, for the kind of buying and selling computes, medium of exchange. It's used for staking as well. Um, there are other utilities to it as well, but those are kind of the main ones. Yeah. So finally, before I ask you with your vision for this year, 2023, can you put that in perspective of last year? <laughs> you know, looking at 2022 and all the fallout from that. Yeah. What do you think you've learned from that and what how will that inform how you go forward in uh, well, I think if, if, any, if any project out there says they haven't learned anything, then um I don't know where they were hiding for the whole 2022, right? <laughs> so I think it was a uh, you know quite a an eyes wide open type of year um in that sense. That we 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 formed the company at the end of 2017. Uh, kudo at the end of 2017 um the 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 kudos the blockchain subsidiary came later that was 2021 when we launched the token um but you know we we have been building in this space or aware of this space since the end of 2017 so we went through this in 2018 that kind of that bear market that that um for many people it was their first one um which extended you know way into 2019 before there were kind of signs of recovery so um you know we were prepared for it. We knew it was going to be uh, to come. Everything is cyclical, and you know we're still a very kind of early stage for blockchain. Uh, I know Bitcoin was 14 years old yesterday, but you know that's still only just a teenager, and everyone else is a toddler, right? So <laughs> it's we're barely that. a teenager. 14 yeah. years, kind of young. <laughs> exactly. Um, so, uh, so yeah, I think, you know, last year was, um, for us, it was really about getting all the kind of strategy in place to make sure that we could weather any kind of storm, uh, that was coming up, particularly on the kind of the token pricing and, uh, and activity on that side. But our focus has always been on the developers and, and the building anyway. So really it was our build year, um, probably our final kind of full build year as well. So 2023 is our scale year um and um you know we were building the blockchain which we launched mid-year we were building the foundation which we launched mid-year we were building kudo compute so we had like three or four major kind of launches throughout 2022 so from from that respect it was actually a 
a, a large success for us. Um, and the good times for everyone that's listening on the on the on the kind of token side. Not I'm not talking about kudos token. I'm talking about the whole market and the whole. It will return, right? So this is this is a growing technology. We just need to be kind of patient. Okay. And while people are patient, where can they find you? Where can they find out more about what you're offering and whether a developer or a, a charity perhaps wants to inquire to the foundation? Yeah, I mean, the best, best, best place is really to go to kudos.org. So C-U-D-O-S dot O-R-G. Um, that's our uh, main website. If you're coming from the kind of blockchain space, you're interested in blockchain, if you're interested in building on, on us, you can find our documents there. Um, you know, there's plenty of tools to kind of help uh, developers to be able to... Um, uh, launch their applications and tools onto to the network. You can come join us in our Discord or Twitter or Telegram. Uh, just search Kudos, C-U-D-O-S, um, for each of those, and you'll be able to get into the communities. And we've got people there to, to help. Or if you just want to join in and have a conversation with us, then you are more than welcome. Actually, I do have, I told a lie, I do have one last question. Kudo, C-U-D-O, where does the name come from? Yeah, so Kudo is Latin for coin when used as a verb. Oh. um so to coin know, we, something is 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 coin a verb uh i think it's to coin something or to give a coin maybe is okay. is kind of kind of a nice connotation there um yeah. and kudos uh is kind of a play on words it's usually spelt with a k but mm. because of our you know parent brand we spell it with a c but it's you know to give praise or to receive praise is to give kudos or to receive kudos so that's got really nice connotations with what we're trying to do as well. Within the brand. Well, brilliant. Thank you so much, Pete. And you're proof that holidays do work. <laughs> <laughs> well, apart from the stumble in the middle, but nobody will hear that because it's no, edited. Be gone. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> you're very welcome. It was lovely speaking to you. Thank you, Julian, and, and, and to the Glitter community as well. Happy New Year. Thank you.